Hello, how's it going? I hope you're doing well. Today, I will be talking about all the books that I read in December. Firstly, I want to show you the birthday present that I got my sister last month. Probably the best present I've ever given someone is the complete collection of Del Toro Quest books. These books don't come like this new anymore. You can't get them all separately. As far as I'm aware, you can only get them in the big complimation books. So I went all across the city in every single secondhand bookstore to try and find all of them. And I actually did find all of them in pretty good condition, apart from the first one, which I had to get on eBay. Possibly only Australian 90s kids know or care about Del Toro Quest but these books just represent my childhood. They were in every library, everyone I knew read them. They're a fantasy series set in the world of Del Toro and they follow the journey of Leaf, Barda and Jasmine. In the first series they're collecting all the gems on this belt, uh, the second one they're trying to find pieces of a pipe, the third one they're trying to find all these dragons and I had to get her the original individual books just so we could have the amazing artwork on the covers. These ones even have like the 3D covers. So the first book I read in December was Scrappy Little Nobody by Anna Kendrick. This is her autobiography and it provides an overview of her life but mainly focuses on stories about her acting and life in Hollywood and stories from high school and what it was like to go from high school moving to LA to try and make it as an actor. I enjoyed every single moment of this book. Anna Kendrick has such a naturalistic way of writing. You can entirely hear her voice in every sentence and it really feels feels like you're just sitting on the couch having a chat and she's just telling you things about her life. A lot of it was really funny and really insightful as well as she talks about things like her anxiety and how even now she would almost always prefer to be at home watching Netflix on her couch eating junk food. But the whole relatable side of the book never felt too forced either and she does discuss some of the crazy things she has to do as an actor like photo shoots and going to award ceremonies and she's really honest about how she feels about having to do those things. And it always is fascinating to hear about the realities behind Hollywood and to realize that even though she seems so glamorous and funny and put together that she still has her own insecurities. It was just a really nice and relatable read and because her writing was so good I'd really love to see her write a novel or a script. The second book I read in December was Animal People by Charlotte Wood. A lot of this book happens on one single hot day in December and it follows the character of Stephen who has decided that he's going to break up with his girlfriend. Stephen is 13 he works in a kiosk at the zoo and he feels like the people around him are constantly disappointed that he hasn't got a career or a family. Throughout the day you slowly learn more about Stephen and the people around him. It's not a very plot driven book but it has some amazingly well drawn observations of sort of middle class Australia and really accurately depicts what I imagine is meant to be Sydney and you can just feel the heat of the day. This is actually a spin off of a different Charlotte Wood novel called The Children. I haven't read that book and you definitely don't have to have read it to enjoy this one. The plot is completely self-explanatory. Out of the Australian books I've read, I think this one is the most accurate depiction of a sort of middle-class white Australian life. And it really feels Australian without getting into cliches. The only other Charlotte Wood book I've read is The Natural Way of Things, which won the Stella Prize in 2016. And al although I loved the writing, I didn't enjoy the story of that one. So I was really glad to enjoy this one because I think Charlotte Wood is a really great writer. So the last book I read in 2017 was My Career Goes Bung by Miles Franklin. So I found this in an op shop. I'd already read My Brilliant Career a couple of years ago and really loved it and I've been curious to read the sequel ever since. My Brilliant Career is probably one of the most famous Australian novels. So Miles Franklin is actually Stella Miles Franklin. So the Miles Franklin Award was set up by her in her will. She left a bunch of money to be given as a prize to any writer who captures a Australia in any way shape or form and then the Stella Prize is also named after her which was created to award female writers because the Miles Franklin Award is being won by men most of the time. And so My Brilliant Career is about a girl in country Australia called Sibylla Melvin. She gets invited to go stay with her wealthy relatives and so it's a very funny very well-observed portrayal of what it was like to be a young woman in the Edwardian era.
here in Australia and talks about the pressures of marriage, pressure on women to be a certain way and it's a, a very feminist book. The sequel is really curious in that it starts off with the premise that the first novel was a book written by the character Sibella Melvin which it took me a little while to understand that that's what the book was saying. So in the second book it talks about her writing the first book and getting it published and then the aftermath of her becoming famous. So it's based on Miles Franklin's experiences of what it was like to publish My Brilliant Career. So as a novel I don't think the second one really works in terms of a plot or a story. You kind of have to read it only if you're interested in the backstory of the first novel. So I found it quite interesting. It's incredibly feminist. A lot of the things that she talks about, about being a female writer in Australia, are still so relevant to now. A lot of the stuff she says is almost still radical today, which I find so bizarre considering it over a hundred years old. In the second half of the book, Sibylla goes to stay in Sydney, and so that becomes more of a satire on the Sydney writer scene at the time. So that bit of the story is a little bit of a drag because she's obviously making references to people of the time and it doesn't really work now. I definitely recommend My Brilliant Career. It is a really great Australian classic and anyone who's interested in sort of late 19th century, early 20th century literature would enjoy it I think. My Career Goes Bung I would only recommend if you really enjoyed the first one and want to keep reading more about Sibylla. That's all that I read in December. Let me know if you've read any of those books and your thoughts on them. I've already got an enormous pile of books to read this year and I've started one that I'm really enjoying so I'm very excited to read those and talk about them soon. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye!